Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. But two points mm. there. He 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 yeah. he was waiting to watch your last breath that night, and that he also mentioned that and that that taught that was that was emotional. And he mm. he also mentioned um you waking up to check in on your family. And yeah. that, like that's where you, your head was at. These things that happen right there hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, but Jake's job was so much harder because he was conscious and he was watching me go through that. Like if I was given the choice to go through that again or to see Jake go through it, oh, 100% I would want to, you know, I, I would not want him to have it but I also would not want him to have to see me go through it. Like, I think that his job was harder than mine. He said like, he I'd... said the same thing, though, about, about you. Your job was going through the hardest thing ever. He said, I was just having to sit there and watch my wife go through. So harder, you both are just mirroring harder. each other here. So there's uh, <laughs> uh, you're both being really nice, but you're both in no. a fucking shit situation. <laughs> and one of the hardest yeah. situations that none of you should have to go through. Nobody on this planet, on whatever no, position you're in, whether you're in the bed on the side, shouldn't have yeah. to go through. And, um, no, you know, no. So, yeah, you go yeah. back in the next week and they, they repeat it. They put that same drug in you and they just watch. And they watch Is it for the same? Reaction. The Does same Does your body drug. get used? Yeah, don't, sorry, I don't mean that. Is it this? Do you go through the same effects as you did the week before, every week for six months? Great question. They told them what happened to me, and the nurses then were like, "Well, this isn't good. That you can't do that again." But we don't really know if we can stop that. Like it, it just has a different effect on everyone. They get, they get like seven nurses in the room when they administer the first chemo drug, and every time they give mm. you that drug on the droop, they watch you. All seven of them just stare at you waiting for like an allergic reaction like if you just go yeah. into like like a, like in case you you go into an anaphylactic shock or some sort of seizure yeah. so they have to just stare at you and you're not allowed to talk to them and they just watch you and they watch this drug go in but they decided to put it through with some fluid so they administered it slower so poor jake's in the car park for like 10 hours now because you know, they couldn't Damn. just pump the drug in. Yeah, they had to put the drip on a really slow uh, slow rate and they also had to put, like, um, the saline, like, fluid, you know, um, hydrate you beforehand. They tried that out as just a let's do this and hope that it helps her little body, you know, because I was only, like, 48 kilos. And they told me that, you know, this will sort of make you get smaller and weaker. But weird, Andy, another weird thing I gained like 10 kilos on ke during chemo and they thought I was going to lose weight and get really sick. But I, I took two weeks for my head to fall out instead of two days and I gained 10 kilos and that reaction never reoccurred. Um, so mm. I just was blessed to get through it, right? So I just, something got me through it and, you know, Jake so, was there every step of the way. And Yeah, it was. So, so every week you were administered for six months. Um, did it Did it get easier then? It, in terms it, of how you it, felt, sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, it got easy because my needle phobia disappeared, but I also got worse at they couldn't access veins. So I had a pick line put in, then it got infected and oh, yeah. I got a skin reaction and, you know, like all these things happen along the way. So it mm. sort of goes up and down. It yep. did get easier because you then you just know what to expect and you, yes. you just go along and you just let them do it yep. and you just tick it off. Like So the whole time had this list, like a written visual list in like a journal where I just wrote every single thing they said they were going to do. Literally every chemo round was written down mm -hmm. and I would cover the whole thing up and never let myself look at it again. And every time they did a single needle or a single round of chemo or radiation, I would just tick it off. And then I would just like fold it back. So every time something was ticked off, 
done, out of mind, out of sight, out of sight, out of mind, you know, like yeah, it's done. So I would just sort of small little chunks to get through it. Every single step had to be just simplified. I couldn't look at that big overwhelming. Yeah. So then, you know, we got through chemo. We then started uh, radiation and I got through that really Mm. easily. I was very lucky. A lot of people can find that really hard. And again, you just don't know what to expect. I guess chemo wasn't my friend, but then radiation was. It was luckily had no bad reactions with that. You know, it was every day for a month. We did that. I had those injections and then before you knew it, you know, it was long and it was slow, but all of a sudden that 18 months was done yeah. and you know, you, your eyebrows and your eyelashes and your hair start to sprout back and you get to tick that final round of treatment off. That's a good and feeling. <laughs> I'm going to show another picture now, Jess, because, um, Jake, just to show, everybody jake support during all of this if, if if you don't already have a picture of jake in your heads yeah. about what jake's done towards um breast cancer even before meeting <laughs> you but then to show the support to his loving wife jess oh we little um, egg hands he, <laughs> <laughs> he shaved for those who can't see it if you're watching it or listening sorry listening on spotify and apple uh, i'm holding a picture of jake and jess with um both their heads shaved um where um, both well sorry uh, did you shave it or did you just let it fall out good question they um they cut it i got it cut short so it was less um sort of less traumatic to have such long hair falling out in mm-hmm. chunks but it started to fall out in clumps and pieces but as as you lose it you don't really realize this happens it, it's very painful like physically hurts every time oh. you move on your pillow in the night the follicles are sort of um irritated from the drug because you're not just losing a hair like a normal hair would fall out you're losing the actual follicle so they're sort of being ripped out of your scalp and every time a hair comes out it actually hurts so eventually i said to jake could you please shave it because we couldn't go in to get it um, shaved in the salon because it was shut for covid so he shaved my head in the shower it was it was short and it lost so much of hair but you know there was just clumps and I was pulling handfuls from it every morning. I'd pull another handful Mm. and drop it in the bin. And yeah, he ended up shaving it for me in the shower so that it would be less painful. And it felt so good to be shaved in the end because it was just pain free. (laughs) I think that's, I think that's what I would do. I think I would want to take charge of it and just go, you know what? I, cancer's not in charge of me here. I'm in charge of it. I'm just going to do it. Boom. I think that's, that's what it. my mentality would be. But again, I don't know. And I hope right. I'll never have to go through that. But that's what I, I imagine. Not. For sure. Yeah. And, I you know, wish no one did. Absolutely. You know, I, it's, There's worse I mean, things obviously... that I do. Like, we're pretty lucky. <laughs> I say all these no. things, but we, we truly are. We're very lucky. So, I don't know. Yeah, the treatment finished. We were excited. And then do mm. you know what happened? Um, literally uh three months after that final treatment before you tell me this though let's go back to the graph that we've seemed to have invented okay. in this episode we have invented. <laughs> yes we have the graph is <laughs> is is has been on a crash and it's because of the treatment finishing naturally is going to start to go up right mm. um it's starting to go up you've got good news the cancer's n- no longer present so the graph is going up do you in your mind think at that point is it going to continue to go up or we're going up because our perspective is we're surviving we get to be together brilliant where's your mind at at this point in time well yeah you've taken me back to a memory actually and i know it's a little bit off track but it's a little bit of how how i felt there i Mm. i remember after that first round of chemo just going back to those 20 something hours that I slept when I, when, when I came out of the house the next day, cause I said to Jake, I just, I'm not going to let this defeat me. Like I'm still going to do the things I love. I'm still going to go out every single day and see the sun and walk the dog. Like, I do not care how slow I'm walking or how sick I'm feeling. I will walk Zeus with you. So Jake would take him on a sneaky, proper walk with a proper pace. And then I would come out and we would do our little, <laughs> pathetic attempt of a walk every day right and i lived for that yeah. that was getting me through every day just giving me that feeling of normality and so mm-hmm. i remember that treatment feeling so sick and worrying i wouldn't survive the next day when i came out the sun just hit my face and i saw the 
sounds so cliche, but I saw the green grass, I saw the bright blue sky, and I literally just burst into tears with so much gratitude that I was there to see that day. Yeah. And I was so grateful. So that is how I felt at the end of treatment. I'm, I'm feeling like I did that that first day that 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 we survived treatment. You know, you, you're just feeling like everything smells a bit fresher. Everything looks a bit prettier. Everything just, it's just got a bit of a bounce to it. Like, yeah, life's good. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah your mental mentality goes up doesn't it andy like it does you've good. got a you've got a mini graph within that negative part of the downfall <laughs> of your treatment because you're going mm. out like you say you've got a graph that's going up on the day so you're in the darkness zone but you're going up in mm. the darkness and then you might drop yeah. again slightly in the darkness and you're going up in the beginning in the darkness and, and you know okay. you, people who are usually ill don't get to don't bother or don't start the bothers that's a horrible way of saying it no but i don't get, get to go don't go outside because they're there their mentality isn't they're just going to get better in the bed but i do believe yeah. with everything that i've done and research and read and I mean, this is not nothing to do with us this. this is fairly basic stuff but just getting mm. out there in the sun does so yeah. much to the mind 100%. soul and body right getting those d3 yeah. levels up is mm. it's the only nutrient in the body that the body ca- creates on its own and it needs two things it needs sunlight and it needs cholesterol those two things i'm not a doctor so anyone listening to me i'm not a doctor don't quote me on that but you know getting the sun and and cholesterol into your system helps create d3 and it's the one of the most important nutrients and if you didn't do those little daily things i'm not saying anything else would have changed but the Mm. journey could have been different right yeah yeah definitely it helps you stay in that good state of mind so we're going outside we're patting the dog COVID's happening and for us, it was kind of a good thing in a sense of Jake was allowed to be home from work. You know, we had each other at home all day, every day during treatment. So I had like permanent carer, my best friend at home with me. We've got our dog. We've got the sun. Mm. We're eating chocolate and hot chips, you know. Yeah. And I'm looking at those photos of those embryos and I'm holding onto that baby's beanie, just dreaming of the day where we're allowed to try our IVF. So here after- we are. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, you go. You go. Well, because I, I think I, know, I think I know what you're going to tell me. But before you do, uh, because after having treatment, um, cancer mm. treatment, chemo, there is a, a a period of time before you're allowed to try. Because you're at the point where you have to go through mm. IVF, as far as you're aware, right? Am Correct. I right? Yeah. That, no, you are right. Good point. Good point to pause there because they did tell us we, you know, we finished treatment. Mm-hmm. If in five years' time mm. you are cancer free you you can give it a go you can try your ivf but yeah you know it obviously costs a lot of money it also it has like a 20 something percent chance of success you know like even with a healthy fit young you know body i suppose in five years time you might be able to try your ivf that's what we how were much told. in australia does it cost for that type of treatment good question um around like roughly around six thousand dollars maybe four thousand dollars per go yeah. so you know you could you could do it and it could not mm-hmm. work and yeah. then and you've got to fork out up. that money every time you try so yeah yeah we were like okay five years till we can give that a go let's start not a countdown in a way of wishing away time because we no. were so lucky to have life, life but yeah. we yeah but we were like cool let's just Keep busy and keep positive and hope that, you know, that that day will come. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I'd said to you before, Andy, my infertility also stemmed from having these really long cycles. So I was having like before my cancer, it was 90 days without periods. So when my treatment finished, it was very bizarre. All of a sudden, I started getting monthly periods. After my 18 months of cancer treatment, I was getting like a cycle every 28 days and that had never happened in my life like i'd never had i used to think it was because of dancing i thought i'm dancing too much i'm too physical i'm too light of a weight that's why i'm not getting like a period a bit like gymnasts and things can i ask a personal question yeah we were you on um childbirth uh, childbirth um what do you call it i don't even know how to say it childbirth um precautions before all of this before cancer before you started um, trying with Jake, before you know what I mean? Growing up oh, young. Oh, great you... question. Yeah. No, there was no reason. Honestly, I had no reason to ever expect that to be a challenge. Like I honestly just thought I was yeah. healthy and young and I would be able to 
conceive and I didn't really know enough about fertility so I also didn't realize that those really long cycles would have a negative impact so I kind of just thought oh that's my body and I have long cycles oh well well I, again I've done research on this as well and uh, yeah. I believe the reason why modern day um, women have breast cancer some of the causes if we go back to our ancestors ladies uh, women in the uh, thousands of years ago again not a doctor i'm only going off things that i've read and i don't know if it's correct but um the literature that says that our ancestors um in the ancient times ten thousands of years ago tens of thousands of years ago hundreds of thousands years ago the female body would have uh around three oh between about 350 cycles in their in their life or or they're around 250 to 350 i can't remember the exact number it was around that whereas the modern day lay female has uh around 50 and and so that's uh um that surge of sorry no it's the other way around no my apologies oh is it so we have more chance these days more rounds you no oh god i've gone blank now what was it yeah they had less they had around 50 sorry in right. their life and the reason why they would only have 50 was because they would be having children left right and center so the hormones would get released uh, the, so they didn't have that surge of hormones in the modern ah, day yeah. now because they don't have the cycles uh, so they have too many cycles sorry yeah. the surge of hormones come out and that's why women get breast cancer apparently there you go. that's what i was well, reading. sorry i got it wrong to begin with no, so my apologies to the listeners um <laughs> yeah but the average the, the the back in the day would be around 50 cycles and now wow. they have uh, women have up to 250 to 300 cycles there in their life and that's because yeah. they don't have children yeah there you go well i had i did have a little bit of polycystic ovaries i also had a little bit of endometriosis like i had mm. little touches of these problems that lots of women have amplified you know some people have the, those problems um even yeah. more extreme than what i had experienced i had little bits of them when they did my surgeries they they found i had those things but only on it on a smaller scale so i was definitely probably like you say andy just those hormones weren't quite surging and i just i just wasn't getting these um these cycles more regularly enough which meant i wasn't ovulating so here i was thinking that would happen after the cancer treatment i'd just go back mm. to my um really long cycles because when you go through chemo you're stripped of a lot right your body is stripped of um yeah. periods also your body just doesn't have the energy a period is there to create life it's there to ovulate to release an mm. egg to hopefully get pregnant mm-hmm. so when your body's going through so much trauma you don't experience a period so i didn't expect to get one that soon after treatment finished but all of a sudden i got a 28 day cycle and then another 28 day cycle, then another 28 day. I was like, my body is like weirdly better than it was before treatment. Let's go, Jake. So here we are waiting for our five years to pass by, if you will, to try mm. our IVF. Mm. And all of a sudden I just didn't get a period. And I thought, oh, that's weird. I was finally getting 28 day cycles. And oh, now so I've you're got... thinking you're going back to the mm, the way yeah, you used to I'm, like, yeah. I'm going backwards like what's happened oh mm. well like it's just how it is kind of thing but then I started to sort of just have this weird feeling <laughs> where I was like could I be pregnant and I'm like Jake remembers that look on my face every single not month because I, I was having long cycles but every time I, I would have a negative pregnancy res- result before the cancer mm. he remembers the tears and the sadness that I would experience. So he's like, why would you put yourself through it, babe? Just do not do a test. That's ridiculous. I was like, ah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So I sneakily went off and did a test without Jake knowing because I needed that peace of mind. I needed to know that I wasn't pregnant because I'm like, if I'm not pregnant, I'll put it aside. But if I was, like, what a crazy trip that would be. So I did a test with Jake literally in the next room. He was in the lounge room. And I was in the bathroom and I did a test and I was pregnant. Three months after finishing my treatments, my 18 months of cancer treatment, I was pregnant without support. Like I had never had had that happen before. The last time we'd fallen pregnant was with fertility drug support. So here I am like, oh my gosh, we've yeah. just fallen pregnant naturally. Like we haven't even done our IVF. How did that happen? Yeah. And Jake you know, I, I told him that I was pregnant. We were so excited. We were just, it was ridiculous. And he said to me, 
it's kind of a cute little way that I've found some closure in our miscarriage that we'd had. Um, I He said to me yeah. that he believes that the pregnancy that we'd just achieved was possibly the miscarriage we'd lost. He thinks that that baby had, had gone away because if I had been pregnant, uh, if I hadn't have lost that original baby rather, if I didn't have that miscarriage and then I had my breast cancer, mm. I possibly would have would have not not won that battle because I, you know, I might have had to postpone treatment for the pregnancy, if that makes sense. And he and and going back to Jake, he lost yeah. a, a, a cousin to that same yeah. um, method. Is the word I don't know journey. Same reason, yeah. The same, yeah. the same thing, the same cause. His cousin yeah. was thirty. She was pregnant. She found breast mm-hmm. cancer. She chose the baby over the treatment. She then lost lost her life to the cancer. So he was like, yeah. "Wow, if you didn't lose that baby, you probably would have." had a different outcome with your chemo. So then, you know, to then fall pregnant, he sort of said to me, maybe that was that baby that knew it needed to disappear for you to go through your treatment and then it could come back again. So he, I like to think of that, you know, because it's sort of that closure. It It is. It's a lovely way to see it. So I was like, cool. I like that. So yeah, here we are pregnant. And that's our now nearly two year old daughter Zadie. Yeah. who, yeah, just decided to surprise us all and beat, beat the odds, be our little miracle. And, and, and the word creepy that you said earlier, there's something yeah. creepy around <laughs> the time frame of the next part. Can you go into your next creepy oh, point? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about the June 4th date, Andy? I am. Yeah, I am. Oh, I, I, am. Love that. I love that. So the 4th of June in, well, 2000 and, um. 20 was was the start of my cancer journey and you know the 18 months that passed so june the 4th of june 2021 was the very last day of my treatment it was my final herceptin injection that they ever did Mm. and they said there's your last last day of treatment done so the 4th of june was significant to us so the following year because i three months after that treatment ended found out we're pregnant with 80 you know 10 months later, she she's born. So mm. nine months later. So on the 4th of June, 2022, we took her home from hospital. <laughs> and then the 4th of June, 2023, <laughs> we're at Zadie's first birthday party. We decided to have her first birthday on that date because it's so significant to us. Mm. And what better way to celebrate with our guests at Zadie's party but to announce our second miracle baby, Jovi. <laughs> so here we are on the 4th of June having our second baby girl. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a weird date. It's just insane, isn't it? Absolutely it is. insane. It's a good date, though. <laughs> we like it's that It's a very day. good date. So that, I mean, I'm sure that date will continue to be just one unbelievable date, right? Yeah. Like going True. forward, how could you not... Yeah. How could you not? All can all plans are cancelled that day. No matter what's happening in the world, <laughs> this is us. This is just us that's together. It. You know. <laughs> I know, right? Well, we love the number three. We're weirdos, and that's our favourite number. And so we've had three June fourths now. So, like, I think we're done. It was a good it was a good run. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty lucky. A great run. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's just insane, isn't it? Isn't it? It's Absolutely insane. You, uh, so um yeah so you just all sums up together you supporting jake in his quest um and you know all of it coming together what a beautiful way to for this story to uh, not end because it's going to continue no doubt in yeah. a in a positive yeah. way uh, with the positive mindsets you guys have um Thank how you. yeah it's just amazing isn't it um if you've Super got any good. advice yeah. then for anybody out there that has yeah. been through it and struggling now from being yeah. post trauma you know post traumatic um to those who have just found out maybe mm-hmm. what you got any advice for not just the ladies but the couples and what advice yeah. could you give with your experiences now what what could you give to the world to take on oh uh, oh uh, so many things that you think of that that you wish you sort of could know, I suppose, just 
for them to hold on to the hope, never lose hope that it's going to be okay and that those good things could, can can come, mm. but also to listen to your body. Like I very much was an intuitive person before my cancer and I still choose to be. Like if you doesn't something doesn't feel right in your head or in your body, to, to listen, you know, so like get get yourself checked if you, do, you don't feel like you're, con, you know, struggling with infertility or that cancer lump or whatever it may be, you know, just to always listen to your body and, and get those second opinions and to then yeah. just, just stay motivated and stay hopeful and stay positive. If I'm, if I was going to give that advice as an outsider based on your experience, mm. I'd be saying, take everything from this story from Jess and Jake. And I think it would be two words, perspective, the two P's, perspective and positivity. No. Thank you. Honestly, that's good. Uh, and I, I mean, you know, I hope, I hope, yeah, that's my, my insight into it. Um, before I Love end, it. before I end the podcast episode with a question, we have missed out a part of your story. I've been checking over my notes, but growing up, you grew up in um, Pakenham, which mm -hmm. is, would you say, about an hour outside of Melbourne? Yeah, yeah, pretty much an hour southeast of Melbourne. Yeah. South, south east of melbourne yep yeah. and um packingham back then when you were growing up was a bit of a country town now it's a little bit more suburbanized hasn't it with all the the estates and that's been built and stuff like 100%. that which you currently live um, mm. um jake obviously moved out there to 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 live with you because uh, he's from another part of melbourne cranbourne area um yeah we met the part that we missed out was because you painted such a beautiful picture of your uh, of why you have gone it's cl crystal clear now that you were meant and wanted to be a mother from such a young age because the values that you were brought up but your mum and your mum and dad um during the time of being diagnosed uh, sorry after the run something yeah. happened with your parents didn't it mm. Mm. oh yeah so they they were always that perfect picture perfect marriage right and yeah. when jake was due to propose without me knowing he was going to propose obviously so during the run um mm. my my mum and dad actually split after a 38 year marriage like they they parted ways and that was also a massive shock and kind of like you say andy the start of that graph crumbling down it was like something else yeah. you never expected to happen um and that Not was when you don't know any different right own. yeah right like you see it happen also, to like cancer, you see it happen to all these other people, mm. and you just think, "Oh, that's awful!" Like, how lucky am I to have that that perfect um, mum and dad that are in love and married, you know? So for that to 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 happen, that was also really strange and really hard and really sad. So yeah, mm. it was kind of the start of things going up and down a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but like anything, comes in full circle, Andy. Do you know what's happened now? <laughs> what? My mum and dad are back together. <laughs> they split. You're just, you, just you and your story just seems to just come together, doesn't it? Oh, my God. We'd, no, we, if we were going to we make a movie, we should make a movie about this because it's, it's like the American <laughs> movies have always been famous for finishing on a happy ending. They've always, they never end on a, on a sad ending. Yeah. There's always a happy ending. You're just, uh, is, at least yours, movie. it would be true. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Realistic fiction. Yeah, they're wow. happy. They're back. To, they're, they're not even just back to dating. They've dated for like several, you know, a year, a year or so now of, of of dating again since that split and that time apart. Yeah, and they've they've now moved back in together and they're they're happy days again. So isn't that beautiful? God, that, that graph. Oh my God, it's a great. I know. It's just, we could have about seven graphs in this episode of different categories, <laughs> couldn't we? Oh my God. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, Crazy. good on him. I'm, I'm glad that's done a full oh, circle and you've got that same. part of your family back together again. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations to those guys. for a reason, don't they? So, yeah, everyone's just sort of learnt and grown and yeah. had these crazy journeys and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, I do have another question before the final question. Um, if there is anything <laughs> that we missed off today um, uh -huh. um, and, and it was super vital, is is there anything that um, you would want to share before I ask you the final question? Anything that we've missed that you think we should have shared that would be valuable to the, the viewers? 
we might have covered everything. But if you just think if there is another one, if there is anything else I, that needs I to be shared. I do think we've covered everything. I honestly can't. I was thinking a few things and then you, you were on it, Andy. So now nah, you're brilliant. I think you've got it all. Okay, cool. Because <laughs> no, you know, sometimes and it's not necessarily about your story. It could be something that the viewers could take on from you or, or, or from your own story. I just wondered if there was something that we might have missed. Oh, actually, I have missed something. I do want to show these little final pictures of the joy oh, in your yeah. faces of you um, <laughs> that you kindly sent through to me before we started the episode. Um, that's with... Zadie up in the air there and uh, little Jovi <laughs> in your belly. And is Zadie a good sister to Jovi? Oh my God. She's beautiful. She's the best thing in the world. She's, um, she's having moments of jealousy, like any, any little toddler would, but, Yeah, you know, she's, uh, she's in love with Jovi. She just pokes her eyes and <laughs> tries to feed her. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and you I've never looked at this either, but what about, these guys, when they're older, what are this? They're gonna take from this from their mum and dad. Oh, oh my god! Gosh, I know. I can't. I can't wait to tell them about their dad. And Jake says the same about me. But I don't. I don't yeah, think I'm amazing. You. Like it's really nice of you to say and nice of Jake to think. But you know, I think we've just we've just had some challenges, like anyone, and we've just chosen to be positive. And yeah. you know, I I truly believe I'm the luckiest person ever. So I don't think I'm amazing. I'm just very fortunate. Yeah, beautiful. And um, yeah, just love it. I absolutely love it. I say that a lot, but I do. I love it. And um, and yeah. I, a lot of people can take a lot from this story and, and, and hopefully turn their lives into, you know, positivity. If, 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 if you can... Uh, if you guys can do it to normal, mm -hmm. average, day-to-day -day people. I mean, you're not average. I mean, Jesus, far from it. But you know what I mean? <laughs> Every day, normal, the next door day, the, the next like, door. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? Um, can do can do this. Why why we can all have the capacity to do it at least, right? Hundred um, percent. Yeah, sometimes sure. easier said than other. See, easier said than done. I get it. But when you're yeah. on that couch and you're not sure you're going to be there the next day, and look at where you are now, then you come on. Let's go, you yeah. know. Hundred percent. Dig deep because it's it's worth it, isn't it? Jess, mm. I'm big on purpose. I did a series about purpose on my other podcast. What is your purpose now? Then would you say in life? Oh. <clears throat> Why do you get up every morning? You know, I think that's the level of purpose, yeah. right? Some people go, oh, well, I go, oh, I get up to get up. No. Why do you get up every morning? What's what, yeah, like what's yeah. driving you? Yeah. Um, I think. It's so similar to what 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 drove me and motivated me through that those hard times, like that desire to be a mum and that, that ache for for children. That mm. is now my purpose. I swear to you, Andy. Like it is to it is to give back to my babies, to Jake and my kids, what I had growing up. Like that that amazing upbringing, a life full of love and positivity and kindness uh, that is all I want to give to my kids I just hope that our kids feel loved every day and that they can spread positivity and kindness because that that would be a job well done in my eyes so yeah that's that's my purpose to just give oh, to beautiful. them Jess yeah absolutely Thanks, well Jess um I thank you for joining me on and being so vulnerable and open. I know it's not easy, but you've you've made it easy, and I hope you've made yeah, it. Yeah. I hope viewers can look at it and go, "It is easy. It, it can be easy." Mm -hmm. I know it's not easy, but you know what I mean. I, I hope people can just yeah, go. No, I get you. Phew, you know what I mean. I don't want it to be offensive because I know it's not easy. <laughs> no. Oh God, no, no. None, none of those. Um, yeah, infertility and things like that. None, none of that's easy. But no. gee, if we can do it and. They can do it too. I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's great. I just want to give power to people to take it in their own hands yeah. and, you know, just think of the self, get, get, get yourself sorted, get your mentality sorted, eat good food, mm. get up and get out into nature and get, go and see the sun and it will set yourself up to deal with some of these things that you, we all have to, and you know, what you guys have been through, uh, and be positive through it. And yeah, I'm going to, I could ramble on about it forever, but, um, yeah, thank you for joining me on my journey, Jess. Cause, um, 
it's, it's helping me so get much. out some good messages to people and uh, sharing these good feel stories and i love how you guys are leading your own way um that's we've made it a little bit of a family thing now so we'll just have to get zadie and Zovi, jovi on when they're older <laughs> oh yeah oh no i love what you're doing andy you're doing a brilliant job and yeah it's been really fun to jump on and share and like you said it could be hard to talk about but no you've made it easy so thank you oh. Very kind. Thank you. I hope I did. I'm, I'm still very much learning and uh, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm definitely learning. I'm going to continue to learn and show my vulnerability in this space because I've mm. never done this before either. So um, thank you so much, Jess, um, to everybody else. Um, thanks for sitting with us and hearing Jess's journey and Jake's journey as well. Um, the wards are amazing. Um, but we'll see you next week and I hope you come back to watch next week's guest and uh, take care, everybody, and have a fantastic week. Have a good one. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.